Hey everyone and welcome back. In this set of tutorials I'm looking at going through a simple RTS or real-time strategy style camera system and we're going to be making this from scratch as always um, but beforehand I just wanted to give a little demonstration of what we'll have by the end of the project. So what I have here uh, we've got it set up in a way that if we find the camera which is the main pawn uh, we've got the option to add an actor which will be our focused actor if we press play this, if it has something available, we'll zoom straight in as you saw there, and then we can rotate around this. We can uh, zoom out and we can also click on other actors in the scene. It doesn't have to necessarily be a floor, we can choose things like the wall, uh, and we can zoom around and look at different objects and rotate around them. So it's a very, very simplistic RTS style camera, but I think hopefully it'll be useful to get people started if you're interested in making this kind of system. Now, this has come from projects I've been working on for just over a year now, and I figured this is gonna be quite useful for a tutorial for people as well. I've also tried recording this previously. I'd hoped to get everything into a single video, but although it looks quite simple, when I started getting into it, I realized there's actually quite a lot of complex systems I wanted to try and explain, run through the logic of why we're doing things how we are, and really try and tidy it up. So this will be set into multiple different videos. I'll try and get them out as soon as possible. And what we're gonna do in this one is go through the setup of the entire project so everything's ready, and we can start putting the main logic in future videos. Okay, so to begin, I have a completely empty project and I'm just going to start by creating the folder structure. I'm going to make our main classes today and make sure that we have all of the project settings uh, ready to go. So the first thing is I want my blueprints folder and inside of this, the important things we want to make are the game mode. So if we create a new game mode, call this BP underscore game mode. Also going to create our pawn. So we're actually going to have the camera as a pawn class. So we'll call this the BP underscore camera pawn. And that's because in this type of game, most of the control comes through where you're moving the camera, what you're looking at and what you're selecting. So it's going to make sense that we have something that we can manually control and also easily receives input. And then the final thing that we want will be a player controller. So we'll call this one BP underscore player controller. Okay, so if those done, I'm going to go into the game mode. We'll make sure that we set the default settings to have our player controller as the BP underscore player controller and the default pawn set to be the camera pawn. Make sure that we hit compile and save this and we'll go back to the maps and modes. So for the maps and modes, we want to make sure that the main game mode is the one that we've just created. And we'll just double check that everything's set here, which it is. And we also want to go back out, create another folder called Maps. And inside of this, we'll just select in the viewport, hit Control and S to save. In the Maps folder, we'll call this one Main. And then we can go back to the project settings. And just to save us a little bit of time, we'll set the editor startup and the game default map to Main. So whenever we launch this, we'll always have the map that we're testing in. And finally, I'm going to set the inputs and uh, control system up today as well. So under the input, there are three different action mappings that we want. So if we just hit this three times, uh, the first one I'm going to call zoom in. The second one we'll name zoom out and the third we'll name click. Okay, so for zooming in, I'm just going to use the mouse wheel up. For zooming out, we'll obviously use the mouse wheel down and the click is just going to be what we interact with the world with. So that's going to be our left mouse click. Comes under the left mouse button here. Then we'll also need two axis mappings, which will be for our horizontal and vertical rotation. So we'll just go ahead and make those. And that will be controlled by the mouse X and the mouse Y. And of course, that is just in response to the mouse being moved sideways or up and down the mouse pad. So that is all of our control scheme done. The next thing I want to do is flesh out the camera. So this is going to be quite an important class. So again, we'll get that out of the way now, which means that when we come back in the next video, we can jump straight in and add the functionality. So inside of the camera pawn, uh, what we want to do is replace the default scene route with a scene. So we'll just place that there. I'm gonna drag in a spring arm. So if you go ahead and find the spring arm and then on the spring arm with that still selected, we want a camera. Okay, so make sure that you have the hierarchy set up in exactly this way, which is going to be the camera attached to the spring arm, the spring arm attached to the scene, just in case we need to do any scaling. Uh, we can keep the scale uniform on the scene and everything else will be scaled below that. Uh, we can go ahead and set the spring arm to a slightly longer length of, we'll say, 800. And we also have some default settings that we want to change as well. So the important thing is with the spring arm selected, we'll go down to the option here and we want to turn off the do collision test. Uh, and this just means that we can get closer to objects like the floor without the uh, rendering going through the floor and trying to move the actor out of the way. The only other thing is we will come in 
to the main scene. I will drag in the camera actor, place this up a little bit, and I'll just give this a slight rotation on the y-axis, I think of about 70. So, sorry, minus 70, so that we can see the floor. And if we move this across, then we are, it, we now know that we're in range of the floor, and this is what we want to be looking at for our tests. Now, the final important thing here is, at the moment, if we press play, we won't be selecting anything. This is gonna create a default pawn, and we'll move this down here, in fact, where the start point is. It won't be the default pawn because we've set that in the game mode, uh, but it also isn't gonna use the one that we've just created here. So we've set this up where we want it to be. So if we go ahead and select our BP underscore camera pawn, and we just wanna make sure where this says auto possessed disabled, we'll change this to be player zero. So now that when we press play, this will be the pawn that we create. The game mode will know that it doesn't need to create an additional pawn. And this is gonna be our camera that we'll be panning around with and using in future videos. The two final things I want to do in this video is we're just going to go into the camera pawn one more time. In the construction script, I'm going to come in here, control drag in the spring arm, and we'll pull off of this and get the arm length. So it actually comes under get target arm length. We want to get this and pull off of the value and we'll promote this to a variable. And I'm just going to call this the default arm length. Okay, and we'll just plug this straight into the construction script. And the way that we'll be using this is if we ever need to do any animation, lerping or moving the arm length of the object, uh, this just gives us a default value to come back to if you want to give the player some kind of option to return to the default state or cancel previous movements and things like that. So we're just going to store this on the construction script. It's one of the generic bits of uh, logic that we'll be using. And the final thing is because we will be interacting with the world, we'll be clicking as our means of interaction. Uh, this is why we've set our own player controller class up. So we're going to go into the player controller. On the event graph, we want to make sure that we can see the mouse cursor. So we'll pull off of the event begin play and we'll just find the set show mouse cursor option. And we'll just tick this to enable that so that when we start the game, the mouse cursor will be visible, which means it'll be more obvious where we're clicking. And of course, you can do this from the pawn class. But because things like this are going to be quite common in especially RTS projects where a lot of the interaction is going to be mouse based, trying to find out where you're clicking, trying to find out the position in world space and things like that. Rather than constantly making calls to a player controller, we can start trying to compartmentalize the logic, make it a little bit more modular and tidy things up by putting them in their own correct classes rather than making calls across multiple different classes. Just to explain a little bit of the logic in the process there. So I'm also gonna get rid of the event tick. We don't need that right now. Make sure that we come in, save everything, and I'll wrap this video up here. As I said, I just wanted to make sure that we had the groundworks of the project ready to go. I've done this from the completely blank project for anyone who wanted to check with that. It's in version 4.2. As always though, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.